Situated in the very heart of the Salento, Palmarigi is an authentic jewel less than 10 kilometers from the Adriatic Sea. In ancient times, the territory of Palmarigi was governed by a variety of feudal lords, though we don't have firm knowledge of its past until 1463, when it became the property of the Aragonese. They constructed a fort to defend the surrounding territories and Otranto from enemy attacks. After that, the town was known as Casale San Nicola. In 1480, after the Turkish invasion and conquest of Otranto, the village became the main character in a wondrous miracle. Just days before the Saracen attack on the fort, not far from today's Monte Yuzzo, the Virgin appeared and led a brigade of warriors with a palm frond in her hand. The Turkish army, convinced they would have to face an overpowering Aragonese force, slipped away in fear. Since then, the village took the name of Palmarigi, which means you who holds the palm. The historical center of Palmarigi still preserves its original age-old character, thanks to the timeless charm of its grand houses, which overlook the alluring narrow alleys. Among these houses, those with communal courtyard stand out. They are the true symbol of the ancient peasant civilization and expression of the very active community. Representative of rural Salento, these houses date back to the classical period and today represent a priceless architectural heritage. The area was once humid and marshy and perhaps it is because of this particular geomorphological detail that the inhabitants of Palmarigi were nicknamed Carnoculari, from the dialect word Carnocula, which means frog. In the past, the Aragonese castle of Palmarigi represented an important defensive bulwark not only for Casale San Nicola, the ancient village of Palmarigi, but also for the whole territory of Otranto. The castle was built by the Aragonese in the 15th century. Originally, it had a square layout with four solid defensive towers three of these with a circular base and only one with a square base. Unfortunately, today just two of the circular towers remain standing, connected to each other by a partly collapsed wall. The whole castle was once surrounded by a moat, which could be crossed only by an east-west oriented drawbridge. This moat was filled in 1956. In 1485, immediately after the tragic sacking of Otranto at the hands of the Saracens, the castle was completely rebuilt and improved from a military point of view. It was the same Alfonso of Aragon who personally oversaw the reconstruction and the strengthening of the lines of defense of Palmarigi Castle, which was established on the ruins of the citadel of San Nicola. The castle was modified for the second time in 1724 by Vernazza, when part of the town walls and part of the parade ground were transformed by the construction of the residence of the noble family, where today we find the town hall. The wonderful Modoni Palace dominates Garibaldi Square. It was constructed in 1796. For two years, beginning in 1938, the palace was the location for political institutional activities of the municipality of Palmarigi. Now these functions are carried out in the nearby Vernazza Palace. 
For several years, the elegant building was also used as an educational institution, housing the classrooms of the primary school. The palace's most impressive feature is the magnificent balcony, full of artistic decorations and enriched with the Motoni family coat of arms. The same coat of arms appears at the top of the portal of another Modoni palace, situated at a few meters from Garibaldi Square. These buildings represent part of the cultural heritage donated to Palmarigi citizens by the Modoni brothers, Gabriele and Giuseppe, in order to carry out social work. On the northwestern side of the structure, we find the clock tower, which overlooks the town square and which chimes the hours reminding people of the time of day. The tower was built uh, between 1885 and 1889 and still dominates the town and its homes with its serene beauty. The town's principal church represents the spirit of the Christian faith of Palmarigi. It was dedicated to Saint Luke, the evangelist by the Ventura family, the ancient feudal lords of the Salentinian village, a family particularly devoted to the saint. The facade in Lecce Limestone reflects late 18th century Baroque design principles, given that it is embellished and enriched with many artistic decorations. On the exquisite, monumental central portal, we find the statue of the patron saint, flanked by two niches, one with the statue of Saint Anthony of Padua, which was originally in the ancient chapel of the Aragonese castle. The second niche contains the statue of the Virgin of the Palm, which was originally located in Via Roma. The monumental facade ends with a pediment which features the town's coat of arms, represented by a palm front. The interior has a single nave and it is surmounted by a magnificent star-shaped vault. The whole structure is embellished with finely decorated stucco reliefs and enriched with many side altars. The high altar, executed completely in marble, is crowned with Nicola Castelluzzo's 19th century paintings, representing the Apostles Peter and Paul. On the inner wall of the facade of the church, there is an enormous painting on canvas representing the expulsion of money changers from the Temple of Jerusalem. The Church of Madonna della Palma, bearing the name of the town's patron saint, is situated in the periphery of the old section of Parmarigi. Its origins are lost in the fog of time, but it was a parish church until 1569. It was rebuilt in 1751, probably as the result of a collapse. It consists of a restrained external facade where the only important decorative element is the large window flanked by two niches with the sacred images of Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus and Saint Nicholas. Even the entrance door is very simple and on the architrave there is an epigraph with the dedication and the construction date of the church.
The interior of the church is small with a single rectangular nave featuring star-shaped vaults embellished with elegant decorations. The high altar in Rococo style is notable for its elaborate beauty having at its center an ancient image of the Madonna of the Palm. Executed entirely in Lecce limestone, it is decorated with statues and friezes of exceptional artistic importance that make it a jewel worthy of close scrutiny in every detail. The statue of the Madonna with child is flecked by the statue of St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Vincenzo Ferreri. Palmarigi represents a place not only of the soul but also of somethingness and culture. It's not a coincidence that the Culture Association El Cielo del Libano decided to establish the Shell and Coral Museum here. Initially, the museum hosted a temporary exhibition entitled Architecture of the Sea. It consists of a collection of mollusks and everything pertaining to marine life with particular emphasis on the local habitat. The collection has been enriched over time with other elements, such that it has evolved into a legitimate substantial museum. Today, the Shell and Coral Museum is considered the greatest museum of its type in the province of Lecce. One can admire corals, seashells and sponges of the widest variety imaginable, coming from local marine areas as well as from all over the world. The museum offers a unique memorable day among God's beautiful sea creatures, breathing a bit of grace into the otherwise mundane daily life of man. Outside the town, near a hill named Monte Yuzzo, there is a small rural chapel, not much bigger than a traditional votive shrine. What characterizes the exterior of the chapel is its absolute architectural and stylistic simplicity, free of any decorative element. The facade is shaped like a hut with the only one symbol of a religion, an evocative bell tower. It was probably built in the 16th century, but an eventual collapse left it in ruins. The present church was rebuilt in the mid-19th century. The interior is bare. There is only a small altar and the fresco of the Madonna of Constantinople. Each year, on the first Tuesday of March, on the Feast of the Madonna of Constantinople, thanks to their devotion and custom, the residents of Palmarigi faithfully conduct a pilgrimage to this holy place. After the celebratory Mass, the pilgrims hold the traditional feast under the beautiful olive trees surrounding the chapel. This is a singular example of a collective celebration and feasting, while the chapel of the Madonna of Constantinople, commonly known as Madonna of the Mount, represents everyone's home.
few kilometers from the town center of Pomerigi, among the rich Mediterranean vegetation the majestic pine trees, one finds the Montevergine Sanctuary. This place of worship is linked to an ancient legend that describes the story of a shepherd boy who, while looking for his lost pocket knife, discovered a mysterious cave thanks to the apparition of a beautiful woman. The Virgin encouraged the boy to invite the priest and the citizens of Palmarigi to visit the site. Then, in 1595, they constructed a small chapel in her honor. The current sanctuary of Montevergine, dating back to the early 18th century, has a simple and linear facade topped with a small bell tower. The temple stands on the site of an ancient Byzantine crypt where you can see an altar with an ancient circular fresco featuring half length representation of the Madonna and Child. On the ceiling we find the Vernazza family coat of arms, the ancient feudal lords of the place. The interior consists of a single nave with an elegant cornice molding and is characterized by some open spaces, balustrades and sumptuous stairways leading to the underground crypt, which then rise back towards the apse. The high altar is a concentration of artistic decorations and friezes in Baroque style built in 1727 by Don Francesco Vernazza, who decorated it with four columns adorned with floral motifs. Outside, on the right of the sanctuary, we find a menea or pillar, approximately two meters high, which mixes Christian worship with pagan concepts, an ancient symbol of the veneration of the deities of nature and creation. The menea of Monte Vergine, situated on a solid carbonate limestone base, is one of several megalithic monuments spread throughout the Salentinian territory. On the promontory, on the left side of the sanctuary, there's a path, symbolically representing the way of the cross of Jesus Christ, which ends on the highest point of the overlook, where a statue of the Redeemer dominates the landscape. The Sanctus artifact inspires fear and reverence, while also representing the link between the divine dimension of faith and the natural beauty of this place and its surrounding landscape. The element which distinguishes this place of worship is the imposing monument dedicated to the Madonna of Monte Vergine, comprised of plinth 36 meters high, topped by a statue of the Madonna which dominates the landscape around it. Monte Vergine represents an unspoiled place which will plunge tourists, travelers and pilgrims into the earth of the Mediterranean scrub among the fragrances and colors which hint at mythological evenly landscapes.